guys, so we are doing this super cute little elephant teapot. That's the reference right there. And let's just, just let's just jump right in. <laughs> okay, so good morning and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie. We're here to paint an elephant teapot. This was a request directly during the 30 drawing 14 hour marathon. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I did 30 drawings in 14 hours and they were all put together in one book. So if you want to draw along with me or color along, coloring along, I have the coloring book. It is available on Amazon and the link is down below in the more information. All of the images are in here, including this cute little guy. But if you want to color along right now, I have an instant download book available on Teespring, and that's linked in the chat here, all of the pages. So grab the book if you want to color along, or you can print it out on watercolor paper and paint along. Good morning and welcome to everyone coming into the chat. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your kindness and your support of my channel by clicking that like button after you've seen a little bit and you say you like the show or not. Let me know. I need to know what things you guys are interested in doing. And if you're interested in more cute and whimsical, that like button will show me that you want more cute and whimsical. So let's go back to the top down. We're going to do this background fairly dark, but I don't want to do it black. And I don't really want to do it all that super dark, dark, just straight dark blue. So I think I am going to make it kind of a darker springy blue by combining my Prussian blue and um, kind of this thalo-y blue, I think. We are going to be doing a mixture of watercolor and gouache in this one also. I have this tilted up on top of just on top of one of my long pans of watercolor. And there we go. So we're going to get this background wet and we'll figure out what we're doing. Part of doing it this way is, you know, letting people come in and get settled in. So come on in, get settled in. I'm going to go all the way up and around the teacup. This is like a little Japanese tea set. The, that sweet little pot and then the cups that didn't have any handles on them. But if you wanted to do a teacup that had a handle on it, you could certainly do that. I'm going to sneeze, sorry. Pardon me. Oh, I think I'm having an, a little bit of some allergy stuff going on. And that happens a lot here in the winter time. The dust and stuff like that that sort of grows in the air. I, I was watching when the sunlight was going across my, my living room yet a couple days ago when we actually had sunshine. And I could see the dust floating in the air. I need to get an air purifier. But you know, it's just one of those things. You, you say you need to get something and then you think about it and you go, oh, well, do I really? I've lived here for 30 years. All the dust is mine. But, you know, it's one of those, okay, I'm just getting all of the paper wet all around this guy. And I need to set my, my camera on my phone so it can be recording. Just one of those, let you get caught up with me a little. Oops. There we go. Get that recording. And get my hair off of there. See, I have very long hair. Well, I say it's very long. It's very long for me. I'm going to go ahead and start getting that blue on there. And this is going to be dark 
blue, but it's going to have some phthalo blue in it, some kind of watery, you know, that kind of watery green blue. So I'm going to put that on first and then start working my pigment in darker. I just, I want this just to be really sweet and whimsical. It's going to be very whimsical. So thank you to Amy for the request. During that long marathon, she kept asking, anytime I did a teapot, make it an elephant? <laughs> so since I knew this was my last teapot in the whole day when I did them, I went ahead and made it into an elephant. Hello, Pat. You loved the teapot yesterday? And this one is so cute. Yes. And you always watch the whole show. That is such a blessing. Having you guys watching the whole show really, really helps YouTube find out that people like these things. And yeah, I'm definitely enjoying this whole, whole series. So if you like this series, make sure that you check out the iCard after the show. Uh, it takes me a few minutes because YouTube has to process the process the video before I can put the iCard on. So as soon as the iCard is there, I will have, or as soon as it's, I'm able to, I will have the iCard there for you, and it will have the whole playlist of all of the cozy videos that we're doing this month. Every single one of those. Uh, paintings or drawings that I did in the marathon is going to have another video like this attached to it or available <laughs> done with that artwork. There we go. I'm trying to get all my words. I'm going to grab some of the uh, sort of the Prussian blue and I want to get some of that worked in. Ooh, look at that. I just want to get some of that little bit darker blue up in here. I don't want it to go moody, though. I don't want it to go dark and moody. I want it to be, you know, sort of soft and whimsical. Good morning. Greetings. Your first teapot viewing. Ooh, excellent, Lynn. I am so excited that you're here. And Michael Ann, welcome. And Linda, yay. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. Let's cheer for our party now. Actually, when I was in grade school, the, the school song, I don't know if schools still do school songs, but, you know, hail, hail, the gang's all here. Let's cheer for our hornets now because we were the Harney hornets and yes that could be something that could be you know teasing things can be done about that but uh it was it was my school we were the hornets those lovely mascots all right what do I want to do for the bottom I think I'm actually going to make the bottom more of just that darker Prussian blue so I'm going to go ahead, and if that background above sort of bleeds down in, that's okay. I did get the bottom here wet first, but I was trying to think, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? The I, I think this little elephant is going to get some of those flowers put on, not over the ear, but kind of on his little body. I think that'll be really cute. So cute and whimsical. That's the theme of the day. So I'm taking the Prussian blue and I'm going to put this, the floor in or the, the tablecloth, the tabletop. I do want this to be darker and not moody, but I just want it to be darker and to give it uh, some contrast because I want the teapot to really show. And if you want 
a light thing to show you really need to have some dark around it so we're really putting that dark background in and I'm still working with this one inch Simply Simmons wash it's a flat brush I've got a lot of water on here and because I have more water below that that table line it's not going up into the it's not bleeding up into the background so much. And welcome, welcome. Oh, guys, thank you so much for coming in. Hey, make sure and click that like button if you're enjoying it. If you enjoy this type of video, hit the like button. That is the best way to tell YouTube that this is a, this is a video that people are going to like. They're going to enjoy it. Because you do. And this is where you guys get to be the boss. You know, you guys get to tell YouTube what you like and not. I'm just putting a little bit more of that dark on here. I'm saying the light is going to be coming from this direction. That's kind of the, about like that. Sort of hitting him right here in the front of the face. And hitting this cup right here on this edge. And a little bit inside. We are going to be doing the mixture of gouache and watercolor, but if you don't have gouache, you can just do the whole thing in watercolor. It's just you'll have to uh, be ready with your paper towel to dab and lighten areas. Ah, uh, so happy that you're here. So I'm wiping off my brush kind of letting that settle for a second I I think yeah I really I like the way the color is going in up here it might need no I think that it's I think it's going in well I'm going to dry this now and then I can clean up a little bit on the handles I'm going to doodle in those flowers on the cup and the elephant so we're going to get to do a little bit of pen doodling and I'm going to be using the same pen that I used to draw this and it is the eco pen 0.38 now I've been told that right now they are out of stock on Amazon with the 0.38 I have not tested the 0.5 so I don't know if it's the same ink so just you know just saying I love this pen. I love that the wa the ink is waterproof. They don't advertise it as being waterproof, but it is. And Mark, thank you so much for reminding folks, sending out the reminder and sharing the video. If anybody wants to share the video, there's a share button down below. And that's always fun. All right. I just didn't want my hand going through and I do need to kind of wipe off some of that wet paint down below so I don't run my hand through it. Pretty much have my background in. There might be some splatters. I don't know. But we're looking at this fun. Click, 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 click. Get all the way through there. See that pretty little pattern on the teapot? Can you see how I... I changed the, the, in the area right here on the reference, I just split it to make the little mouth. We've got that little shape to the handle. You know, I'm at a slightly different angle, but that's okay. We're going to take the pen and I'm going straight in with the pen. You can go with a pencil if that makes you more comfortable. I am just going to go in with the pen and say right here on his little cheek, we're going to give him a flower. Let's see if we go to that side. Ooh, that'll be better. Then I'm going to give him lots of petals. Let's see if I can just bring that up so you can see a little bit better. This is, um, you know, a hand-drawn And I'm using it as a reference, which means that it doesn't have to be exactly the same, right? It's already not exactly the same. 
Now, if you have a problem keeping your circle, keeping your um, flower petals going around in a circle, you can draw a target circle down. Okay, and you can draw the, the center. And then go with your pen. And when you go out, you can hit that outside line, that outside circle. And that will help you keep your petals the same size. Or actually keep your flower going around at the same, kind of the same angles. And then you can erase off that pencil line. And then we can go like this. And I'm going to say there's a bit of a circle right here. So I hope you don't mind that we're doing a little bit of doodling along with this. I think I, I like how I stayed on track there. So I'm just going to draw my little circle. And these are long, skinny U-shapes, basically. So even if you don't want to draw, this is doodling, guys. This is that super fun and easy, easy type of art. I'm going to say there's a flower that's coming out from underneath of his ear. So let's, I'm dropping the center right there. I could have drawn my circle first and then put the center. But see, by doing that, it helps me keep my petals a little more even. This is not zentangling. This is doodling. These are flowers that you've probably been draw drawing since you were, you know, four or five years old. I know I have. Maybe not with so many petals. Maybe when I was littler, I used fewer petals. But this is, you know, just a fun and easy little project. I am looking back here and going, I want a flower that you kind of see coming around. And it's going underneath of the ear, but it's around the backside here. So see when there's a line I just stop. Whenever my pen is going to come in contact with a line, I just pick up my pen and go, where does it come out? It comes out over there. And maybe we will put one up here. This little guy is getting flower tattoos. <laughs> Good morning, May. And Mike? Mike. Oh yeah, Linda's friend. Welcome, welcome. So happy you guys are here. I'm going to put one right up here. It's going to be a partial flower. So, you know, you are the one that's in control of your art and you get to decide how you decorate things, right? We're doing this cozy and fun. And I think my little flowers are going to get a little bit more doodling. I'm going to put like an exclamation point or a letter I. Depends on if it's which part of the flower you're looking at. It's just a line with a dot coming from the center. So the line is coming from the center and going out. And when we do our teapot, there's going to be a little bit of gouache, but I don't know that I'm going to make it as heavy with the gouache as yesterday. Since I'm doing all of this pen line, pen line work, I don't want the opaque paint to go over the top and block out all of my flowers and leaves. So I could have waited, done the teapot with the, with the gouache, and then doodled on top of it, I find that even with the watercolor, the pen sort of skips a little bit after the watercolor is on. I'm going to put a few little leaves in. And I think I'm going to just drop the leaves in and put a line all the way through the center of it. 
Again, this is doodling a whimsical little elephant teapot. Cute and cozy. And you can put your leaves on or you can put swirly vines in. And you don't have to put them in if you don't want to. Oh, got to put my little my little center lines. These are the little crease lines or they could be the stamens. This is not a dip pen. No, this is a ballpoint rollerball pen. So it's a cardboard tube that's the handle and then the, the rollerball tip pen right there. And see what I was saying like yesterday? I, I clutch things in my left hand when I'm drawing. Really weird. <laughs> I'm going to say that there was a flower that was coming right over the top of his little face. That would be right there on the forehead. Just, just fun. So fun. And then I can have a little leaf. And maybe I'll put a little end on these leaves. Make your decisions when you, when you come to them. You don't have to make a decision every, oh my gosh, that is so cute. Oh, so sweet. I'm going to say that there's a few little petals showing up right here. But not, not that much. All right. So they are the Eco Pen. Let's go back to the top down so you can see it. So see, I was not staying, doing everything that that shows, that the reference shows. Just doing a little bit here and there. Oh, this is so, so cute. Ah, so on the, on the reference, they do have some pattern on the lid. I don't know if I want to do pattern on the lid. I think I'm going to leave it. Oh, golly, that is so, so cute. Your grandson, Eric, would love this. His favorite animal is an elephant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Elephants are so cool. I think I'm done doodling that. I'm going to put a few doodles on the cup. So we'll do it from the front way. And maybe this one is going to have, it's going to be in the same set, but it's going to have a little bit different petals. These are kind of like long skinny hearts. Your decision you get to make the decisions. You get to make your choices. Nobody is telling you exactly what you should do. You are the one telling yourself. So, like that. I think the these longer or these little heart petal ones are going to get some double, sta double stamens or double lines coming out from this. See? You can fill whole pages with just little flowers. Anybody want to watch? That, that was one of my ideas that I might do um, because some people have asked for some more drawing and uh, just longer drawing and doodling pages where we just do um, in I'm thinking in February, doing some longer, um, just, just doodle pages where we doodle a whole sheet, making cards, making, um, making them as postcards. I did do a full mini, mini marathon kind of ended up being a half marathon day 
where I did uh, floral doodle hearts. Oh, see, that's sweet. And by putting it like half a flower on an edge, it looks like the cup goes around, doesn't it? Ah, you're doing... <laughs> Aw, thank you so much, Amy. Thank you, Annabelle. So sweet. Oh, you know what, though? Little tiny line like this. And now he's got a smile. Little tiny, little tiny line. Maybe I'll just put a little, little, little leaf right there. So now he's happy. <laughs> it's, it all, it, he had a neutral expression. He wasn't really frowning. It was neutral. Your doodling is my favorite. You'd love a full session of doodling? Thank you. Thinking about accidentally awesome. Ooh, Michelle, that would be a fabulous name. Good alliteration also. You know, double A. It's kind of like those names that people would choose when they were trying to get ranked at the front of the telephone book, you know, back in the day. That's why you had triple A. That's why you had, um, you know, double A, double A heating and cooling, um, you know, those kinds of things. And now we're going to doodle in those, doodle in those little leaves. They're just sort of tumbling around. The little swirls just help to fill in space. They optically just take up that space visually, visually, optically. It would be, well, you see it. It would be optics, right? But it's visual because you see it. I don't know. I think that is, I think that's good. And I'm not going to put anything down there on the base. All right. He's all doodled in. I'm going to put a little... A little one right here with the... With those little double petals. Because I didn't put any double petally ones there. So now he's got a little double petal one over here to kind of go with this. They're going to be in the same colors anyway. I am looking at that and going, hmm. Because we're changing this up a little bit and we're making it a little more whimsical, we're not putting the reflection down below. So we're just putting shadow. What are we doing? First off, what I need to do is clean up the edges just a little bit. So I'm going to go in with my brush and wet the handle and sort of soften up that paint just a little bit. And then I can take my paper towel and give it a dab. See how I can clean up? This is the Hanamula Bamboo mixed media paper. It is available on Amazon. I do have it linked down below. It is 90% bamboo and 10% cotton. I did all of the drawing for that marathon on this. If you're enjoying this, please make sure and click that like button, guys. Those of you who have just come in, welcome. And in, I hope you're enjoying what you see. Getting a combination of watercolor, doodling, gouache. I, I kind of like getting to do all the things. You guys seem to like getting to do all the things too. So that makes me really happy. I'm getting that foot right there. See, I'm just cleaning up the edges. Some of the paint will be you know, we'll stain the paper a little bit more, but as long as I don't have a hard edge, I'll be able to make this all work out. 
little bit of staining of blue is not going to affect the long run on this painting. So sometimes, sometimes I get a little bit drilled into things. I, I look at it and go, ooh, what can I do? How can I, how can I make things easier for myself in the long run? And a lot of times I'm figuring it out as I go along. This one is totally being figured out because if you think about it, we are, we're making something that's totally different than that teapot right there in the reference. But put them side by side and they look like they belong to a set. Hello, Dee Dee. Late night for you again, huh? It's hard to have a bad day when you watch the cutest teapot ever being created. Aw, thank you so much, Amy. I need to get the inside of that teacup and that rim. So I'm just using my brush and yeah, it, this could be a little bit rough on my brush. And this is my favorite brush. <laughs> so, but you know, use what you've got. And if you only have one brush for doing your painting, use that brush to soften the paint. You don't have to scrub hard. I'm not getting down, I'm not getting in there and mushing my brush really hard. I'm just tickling the surface. Just tickling the surface because this little elephant is tickling my fancy. Oh, see what I did there? It's tickling my fancy. Doing something whimsical like this, just, this would be beautiful as a card for, you know, maybe a, um, oh, like a, like a wedding shower or a baby shower, sorry, baby shower, not wedding shower, baby shower. This would be a perfect baby shower card or Mother's Day or invitation maybe um a little a, a little kid's invitation to a teddy bear tea or something like that hello brandy you used to have a teapot a tea set and the teapot looked like an elephant head kind of like this but gray yeah well i was thinking that we might do this more in a kind of a gray with the pink on the inside of the ears then we could go in and put just a little bit of color onto the flowers how about that kind of like that idea and the cup is empty it's not it doesn't have any tea in it so it just has shadow I I like that idea we could go with I think maybe a hmm maybe kind of a warm oh baby shower get well soon yeah without the flowers that your your tea set was like this without the flowers the shape was very similar cool yeah i just i love doing these little doodles and the reference having those little flowers and leaves just made me happy so craft fix welcome i'm so glad that you're here um we don't do any uh, shout outs or um, asking people to follow us so please you know we're here for the art and I'm really happy that you're here and I hope that you are getting some ideas I do share ideas and things like that about you know about YouTube and about uh, channel you know how how we can get people to organically find us and part of that is become part of a community Become part of, you know, if you're here a lot and you start, um, you know, participating in the chat and getting to know people, that's more often when I will um, shout your channel out or I will give more direct, you know, input. So thank you so much for being here, guys. So Dee Dee, thank you. You took pottery and um, made art and the instructor made artistic tea sets 
Oh, that's, that's cool. So I want to go ahead and get that eraser out of my way. I think, I think we're going to do with, we're going to go with the gray for the body. We're going to keep it light. I am going to go in and give this a quick little wash of water. See, I'm going over those pen lines and they're not getting all washed out. The longer you let this paper sit with your pen, the better. Because with any kind of pen, if you, uh, even like a micron, if you go in and draw too quickly with your water over your, your doodles, it will bleed or lift. So just, just be careful. Test your paper. I know that the pen lines that are on here that have been on here for a long time are going to not move. I'm noticing ever so slightly a softening of the pen lines, but they're not lifting and they're not bleeding out. How is Susan? I'm not sure, Kim. I can say hi, Kim. I will say hi, Kim. Welcome. Welcome. I'm going to go ahead and get the teacup wa uh, wet also. So there we go. And now we are going to take some of that Prussian blue. I'm going to work on it right up here. The Prussian blue and some burnt umber. We're going to warm the warm that uh, gray. We're going to make a warm gray. It's almost a black, but not quite. And the way we have it be gray is we've got a lot of water on our on our brush and we have a lot of water in the in the paint and a lot of water on the paper. And I'm just going to go over everything. I will dab out. In the uh, flowers, I will dab the color out of it. But for now, I just want to get kind of a base coat of some gray on here. Elephant gray. And in those areas where there's a little bit of blue that's still shining, not a big deal because I'm going to say that this will have some blue and pink and green going on here. So first we're just going in and giving it a light wash of some color. And now I'm going to say clean paper towel. I'm just going to take a chunk of paper towel and I'm going to blot out over the flowers. Just like that. See how we're already starting to get some shape and form just by taking and blotting out some of that color. I'm going to let that sit just for a second while I, whoops, while I drop my brush. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pick up some more of that gray and I'm going to get it down here on that cup. Of course, I put the, the darkest gray over on the side where it's the highlight. Silly me. Using references is awesome. Now, oh, something to look at there. Look at that, the reference. Our shadow is darker on this side right here, right? But the inside of the cup is lighter on that side. The shadow on the inside of the cup is over here on the opposite side. See what that does is it makes it feel there. It makes it feel like this is a dimensional object now. Just that. 
right like that. You already feel like this has light and dark, dark and light. Hello, Lucid. Welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And Brittany, welcome. Yeah, guys, it's fun to see new people coming in. Thank you. I am going to make that gray again. It's the Prussian blue and burnt umber. Mix it up together. Put some water in it and go, nope, a little, little bit more burnt umber. Ooh, look at that. So it's not black. I didn't, I didn't mix an actual black there. I'm going to put some of that darker tone down here underneath of the cup. That, uh, the base is underneath. It's being shadowed a lot by the cup itself. So I'm actually going to make that base pretty, pretty dark. Might come in and just take up my paper towel and lighten that up just a smidge. Since I made my base a little bit bigger, I want to darken up a little bit more right here. I am going to take color in on those flowers. So they can go in though, the colors can go in as I'm The colors could go in as I'm doing this here, or I can use them as glazes. And I think I'm going to glaze the color in. I see there's going to be a little bit dark right there. And I want right inside the cup right here. That's probably one of my darker spots. There's a little bit of a highlight, sort of a random highlight. It's sort of coming right down there. Actually, what that what this highlight right here is, is actually the reflection of the light bouncing off of the teapot. Look at that. So you can get some ideas here. This is a fun project to do if you're learning how light is bouncing and reflecting Very in a very simple way. I am going to take a little bit more of that Prussian blue and add that into my shadows down here and maybe even a little bit into the shadow up in the cup a little bit more blue because it's reflecting the blue from the table look at that cool now I'm going to come back over here and start putting in some shadows, maybe I will be going back and darkening some shadows, especially like this one right here inside the cup. Darken up those shadows as you see it. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Don't worry if your lines are a little wobbly. We are doing this so that it feels like a little handmade project. All right, so I'm taking some of that really dark. I'm going to put that underneath on the, on the foot of the teapot. This is the foot of the teapot. I'm going to say there's a little bit of a slight sliver of light. There's a little bit of that blue in that deep shadow and now I'm making this up this part I'm making up right because the teapot in the picture doesn't have a foot and it's not sitting on a blue surface it's sitting on a reflective glass and the background that they have there is really a super deep dark blue um, in the in the upper side and then reflective dark glass down below so it's like a mirror and I'm not really doing that, although this looks like a reflection almost, doesn't it? I'm not doing a reflection. You love blue and white, 
Blue on white dishware. Yes. Blue on white is very, very inviting, very pretty. I am taking a little bit of that dark blue, looking at this going shadow. This backside of the teapot behind the ear is really in shadow. Under the ear here is really in shadow. Now I'm making up my my shadows here a little bit also, right? Because my my teapot has these ears that are sticking out ever so slightly. They're not going to be, you know, it's not like the ears are sticking straight out from the teapot. They're wrapped around, but they're dimensional. So I want to get that dimensional quality on those. They'd be casting a shadow. Even a little bit up here in front, I'm saying that maybe the, sh the way the light is hitting here, the, the shadow is being cast down. So just, just have fun. Have fun working this. I'm having fun. I hope you are too. If you're enjoying this, guys, click that like button. Show me that you are enjoying it. That's the way I, I learn what you guys like is by you guys hitting that like button. If you want more fun and whimsical art, I've been doing, I've been doing 30 whimsical, cozy paintings all month long. Now the paper is still wet right here. And I'm taking a right close up to that elephant ear. A little bit heavier dark shadow. That one I'm going to let sort of work its way back a little bit and down. See? We're starting to get the, the idea that there's a little bit of shape on that. A little bit of shape and form. And then I can swoop my shadow around. And so this handle here has a bit of a shadow there. And the handle has a bit of a shadow here. I can look at the reference. I can see they've got some interesting lighting. Interesting lighting going on. Crazy elephant ears. Very awkward to store. Yeah, if the elephant ears stuck out really far, it would be very awkward to store. It would be one of those teapots that you would have to basically have a shelf that you just put that teapot on <laughs> and it just lives on the shelf. I'm going to clean up just a little bit there. And coming back here, the very back of that handle actually is going to stay pretty light. There's a softer shadow on the inside. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the paint right there off of the teapot itself. Not even going to my palette for that. I'm going to lighten that up just a little bit. Where you leave a sliver of light, you've got, you've got it showing a little bit more form. So it starts making the handle feel like, like it can go around a little bit. So that's why that slightly darker shadow right here. Just like that, just like that, it already gave it a little bit more form and shape. I'm looking, I think I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow right here. There might be a bit of a reflection also. Just a few little dots, a few little spots of color. 
That's looking good. I think we're going to take some of that darker gray up on the inside of the ear and we're going to start putting a few of those little shadowy bits in on the ear just to, just to say that it has a bit of shape. Take a little bit more water. Would it look bad if the background had those water spot snowflakes? No, especially if you were making it as a, um, you know, a spring, t uh, not a spring, but a, ooh, we could, if we did the, um, if you did the splatters with maybe a pink or soft, hmm, so that it would sort of splatter out and grow out. But the background is already dry, so I would have to wet the whole background and let it sit for a minute. And then you can splatter the, the brush with maybe just a little bit of a soft pink. And it might blur into sort of like pinky purple flowers. That could be interesting. I don't know that I want to do that for this one, but you certainly could. Okay, I'm saying that has a little bit of a shadow and a little bit of a highlight. There we go. And this is ceramic. It's not actual living flesh. So, you know, you can you can do things on here that you wouldn't necessarily want to do if it was a live elephant. But I am just looking at that going, hmm, let's see. We're just getting some highlight, some shadow. There's going to be a little bit of pink on here just because I want a little bit of pink. And I think the pink is going to be going in the flowers also. Just sort of wandering around going, where am I going? Where am I going? I think right up here we need a little bit of that darker color. So we're just making this little elephant just come in isn't it isn't it just sweet i'm going to go right like this right underneath kind of up and then the inside of the spout because we see the inside of the spout if we didn't see the inside of the spout you wouldn't put it there little bit of dark kind of underneath here since this is a dimensional teapot we're we're trying to put some of that dimension in a little bit of some shadows just sort of those areas where the the teapot might have been you know it's handmade, it's hand built. They might have done a bit of pottery wheel to get the basic shape and then let it dry to a leathery a leathery point where the they, they call it leather when the um a lot of moisture is out of it. It's still wet. It hasn't been fired. And then you can you can do a lot of uh, sculpting on a previously um, pottery wheeled piece. Oh, that's looking good. I had to stop and look up. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to stop and look up. And hold up your piece. If you're working, this is being worked on a slight angle. My, my, probably about a 20 degrees. Just working it in. I think maybe when I put my flowers in is when I will add a little bit of gouache to the flowers. I think that will work. I like this, working this pot in with the grays like this. Gives us that little, he's kind of a whimsical boho type of elephant. A 
little boho elephant teapot. Right under there. I, under the mouth, I want it to be a little bit darker. Right there, under the lip. Top lip. So we keep that separation. All right. I think we're going to grab a little bit of the magenta now. And so yesterday I was doing the gouache on my paint. And you see how I, it was right there. I'm just going to clean that off. Just getting it wet and rinse it off. And there might be a little residue of some gouache. That's okay. But see, it's two little brush wipes and it's all cleaned off. So now I want to take a little bit of that that pink and I'm going to make our make our reference much smaller so that way you can see better. If you get water drops on the ferrule of your brush just wipe them off so that they don't randomly fall off and if I take this straight to, to here, it's going to stain immediately. I want to get my paper a little bit wet in the area where I want my pink to go. So that way, when I put the pink on there, it's not going to be as strong and it's not going to grab into the paper immediately. Going to put a little bit of that pink out here. Just because I think it's a sweet color. A little bit of that up in the there. See? Oh, so sweet. And I think that the flowers, I'm trying to think what, what color. Hello, Shadow Wolf. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. And if you're interested in the drawing, I did a 14 hour marathon <laughs> where I, on New Year's Eve, I drew 30 drawings in one sitting. Yeah, <laughs> that was, that, I started at like oh gosh I don't even remember what time of day I started I started really early in the day I think it was noon I started at noon and I went until four in the morning it was crazy so if you're interested in the drawing um I have it on here let's let's zoom out for a second I need to let that sit I need to let it dry for a second and I need to look at it from a bit of a distance so we can, ooh, look at that. That is looking really, really cool. It's not done yet. We've got a little bit more we're going to do. But if you're interested in the artwork for this whole Cozy and Creative series, I'm doing a painting every day, um, well, Monday through Friday, and uh, until they're all painted. So I'm, I've got paintings scheduled um or that will be live scheduled in just a couple, probably this afternoon, through the 8th of February. Monday through Friday through the 8th of February, I'm painting all of these guys, um, finishing it up. So we've already done all of these paintings there. We did the pink teapot yesterday. And today we're doing the little elephant. Tomorrow, oh, this book is out of order. <laughs> this book went out of order. This is the one that's in order. So if you want to, oh, but if you want this, it's on Teespring. <laughs> there we go. This is available on Teespring. It's an instant download, so you can start coloring, painting along with me, print it on any kind of paper. I printed uh, the bunny slippers out on a bigger piece of watercolor paper just from my inkjet printer. I have a Canon Pixima 9521 or 9520. And uh, the ink, when you print it on draft mode, doesn't bleed when you watercolor on it. So this is just 140 pound watercolor paper. Tomorrow's painting is going to be 
this one with the window and your cup of coffee, post-it notes, a, a sketchbook, and glasses and a pen. So that one's going to be a lot of fun. And all of the pictures are in my uh, Cozy Creative Designs on Amazon also. So there we go. See? So there's the... What we started with and what we where we are now. So how's that? Pretty cool? So the designs in the coloring book are very basic looking, aren't they? But it gives you room to color them the way you want. The sunflowers and coffee is going to be a lot of fun too. And the cat. Oh yeah. There's we've got we've got all kinds of fun coming up. So thank you guys. Oh, if you I just released yesterday on uh, Teespring. If you are interested, I know a lot of people have already bought the downloadable coloring book, the mini coloring book, but many people were saying that they wanted the ability to have the prints of the do watercolor doodle hearts. So I went ahead and made a downloadable, it's a two page downloadable on Teespring. So this would be the bottom of the page and then you would have two cards at the top and then a second sheet that has four cards. And then you have all of these, they can be sent as postcards, printed up on cardstock, just, you know, anything cardstock. If you can hold it up and it doesn't flop, it's thick enough. And these are four and a quarter by five and a half inch square or rectangles. And yeah, you can print them out and put them on the front of cards if you want to do an actual gift card. Print them out and uh, cut them apart and use them as postcards as Valentine's or as Mother's Day or as a card that you want to send to a friend just to say, hi, I'm thinking about you. They're not mushy or romantic. They're just sweet and whimsical. And that's available on my Teespring shop now also. So there we go. Okay. That's all the that's all the sales stuff I'm doing. And if you guys like my artwork and you like these videos, click that like button. I really I'd love to see that like button, you know, all the likes. I want all the likes. That's what I want. I want all the likes. So now we're going to zoom back in. And focus. There we go. Pop that focus. Pop that focus. So now I want to go in and put some color on those flowers. And I think the flowers are going to be... Um, well, maybe I'll do the leaves first. I'll do the leaves first. The leaves are going to be... Ooh, I can kind of get that color right there. I'm going to use sort of a soft green... Sort of a an olive sage I can make it feel a little bit more sagey by adding just a touch of Prussian blue to it and then a little bit more of that green and if I want a little bit brighter I can slip up here right there get that little bit of green and add that Ooh, look at that so now I've got a couple different shades of green that I can go and put on my leaves and I'm just going to take this brush dry and just put the color on. And do you see when you put the color on in an area where there's already dark paint, you get an instant shadow. It feels like it belongs there. Thank you, Carmen. Yeah, the... Um, Doing the mini marathons is a lot of fun. I think I am going to be drawing up, and I know I said this yesterday too, I'm drawing up little houses and I'm going to draw them up the first time using my uh, iPad. I'm just going to drop little houses, um, fun little Victorians and cottages and bungalows. And I'm doing a lot of uh, street view, viewing of Google Maps to look for houses and different shapes. Because people build houses in different shapes and different styles, different places in the world. So 
it's kind of fun to do that Google view, street view, to find houses. I also have houses that I've taken pictures of on walks, my own personal street view. And then, um, but I'm going to do my coloring book up first before I do my live stream. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick uh, like three or four houses and we'll do a live stream doodle session, you know, marathon, but only do three or four little houses because when you're drawing them, there's, there's things that you have to pay attention to. There's shape and, and um, shape and form. And you want your house to kind of stand up, right? So, okay, I'm cleaning off my yellow. There was a bit of green that was on my yellow. So I want to clean that off. Actually, it wasn't green on the yellow. It was, um, it, let's see, can I get my yellow to slip in there? Ever so slightly. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to pick up some of that, that yellow. It's kind of bright. I'm going to put it on the centers and then I will dab it off after I let it sit for a minute. We're making a whimsical teapot, right? So it can have sunny yellow centers on our flowers. And even in the spots where it's dark and gray, I'm going to drop the yellow. It's going to glaze it ever so slightly. This is just straight yellow watercolor though. It's not, it's not, um, not gouache, not gouache yet. I might add a little bit of gouache to it. Now I'm going to just lightly blot, rotate my paper towel. So I'm not printing that color back down in another spot that I don't want it. kind of fun to do these working this out so now question do I want to say that these little flowers have shadows it's like they're um, embossed on the outside so if I did that I would want to take my uh, blue and make a gray and then leave the flowers as white kind of like white daisy flowers I kind of like that idea and maybe use a little bit of the gray blue on the inside or do we want them to be um, kind of a pink daisy like a like a uh, cherry blossom pink daisies or cherry blossom pink flowers let me know let me know what do you guys think don't usually join the live chat but oh. <laughs> Thank you, Davina. That's sweet. That's sweet. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. You know, a lot of people are watching on their televisions and they don't realize that they can. Did you know you can do a thumbs up on TV? If you've got a smart TV and you're watching the this video on your smart TV in the app, along your um, the the bar where if you were to, you know, rewind and fast forward right above it, there's usually a little like three dots or it says more or something like that. If you click on that, it will let you give a thumbs up and it, you could even, you know, I, I found out that I can subscribe to people from that bar. Also, I can click that subscribe button. I did that yesterday on, um, on a video that I was watching. It was like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. So there we go. White flower. Yeah, I think white flowers. Thank you, Annabelle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my little palette bit right here off. I'm just getting it wet. Rinsing my brush out. Beauty and the Beast teapot. <laughs> yeah, this could be. It could almost be like a Mrs. Potts teapot, right? So what I'm going to do is get my Prussian blue and I think I'm going to use the Prussian blue as my, whoops, I just bumped my, bumped my camera 
on the top. Okay, good. Still recording. <laughs> so I'm taking my t my brush here, and I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Oh, I can zoom in a little farther. And there we go. Hey, Jocelyn. Nice to have you here. I am taking my just Prussian blue, and I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow coming down under these flowers, kind of like they're white flowers that are embossed on. Now I could use a smaller brush, but it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to do these things with the big brush just because, you know, and even in the, the shadow bit there, I'm going to say that that's got a little bit more of a shadow under the flowers. Just make my, my shadow a little bit darker than the, the dark, a little bit darker than the dark. <laughs> that really made sense, didn't it? Oh, but I'm really enjoying that. And it just adds a little bit of dimension. I think I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow around the button in the center. The, that center right there. A little bit of a shadow right there. fun stuff. This is fun stuff. This is, this is my happy place, guys. I know I have people that are going, oh my gosh, you're doing so much. You're working so hard. You're, you know, so many videos, you're going to burn yourself out. And it's like, no, I will. Um, I will say that when I was doing, I'm going to put a deeper shadow right here underneath of the, underneath the bowl of the cup. So I want to give it a little bit more shape. There we go. So when I was doing daily, because in December I did, I did daily painting and now I'm doing daily weekday paintings. <laughs> so I backed off a little bit, you know, you work things out and part of it is the YouTube, the, the YouTube beast just was not, um, rewarding me for going daily. It started, I think, not showing my videos to people as much. So going just weekdays, it seems like it, it feels like more people are getting a chance to see my videos, more chance to see my artwork. So now as you let it dry, your colors might fade a little bit, might um, reduce in their opacity or darkness. So you want to go back in and bump up the contrast. That's how we see things. We see things in contrasts of light and dark. And you can do complete painting with just light and dark. And you can do it with any color, but you know, it's kind of like with the, the grayscale type painting. So I'm just using that very tip of the brush and just going in tip, tip, tip. I would go in with my side camera and let you see that. Um, we can look, but I think that it's a little farther away. Yeah, it's a little farther away, but maybe you can see I'm just barely touching the tip. And I just picked up a little bit more of that paint, the paint, the um, Prussian blue. And I'm using that as my darkest dark in a concentrated amount. And because I've gone on here a couple times already, this paper is a little bit damp. And so my little shadow, when I drop it in, is getting blurred out ever so slightly which is perfect. See how that just makes those little flowers just pop up. 
So right now, this is just plain watercolor and no gouache. Right now, this is just plain watercolor and no gouache. I might take a little bit of gouache and do some highlights. I, I was thinking I was going to do this with gouache, but golly, this is, it's working out without. So bump up those contrasts. Because where I put the, that super dark, it's actually making that flower pop up and feel more dimensional. Like it's embossed. I want it to feel like it's embossed on the tape, on the, uh, on the cup, on the, and then on the teapot. And then a little bit of the dark around the center on one side. Oh, that's cool. All right. So now we're going to go back to the top down. Um, so you can see it up close better. A little bit more of that even darker right here. Just like that. Hello, Birdie M. Welcome, welcome. Bonnie. Oh, I just saw you there. So, hey, yeah, guys, thumbs up. That's what I'm going for. I'm going for those thumbs up because you guys can, you know, you guys have a lot of control out here in YouTube. Did you know that the viewers, because YouTube is here for the viewer experience. So now I'm just, just very, very carefully just putting those little dark spaces and maybe not all the way around and I will come back I think his little eye I'm going to put a bit of a blue shadow around the eyelashes and under the eye fun I am going to go in and I want to soften up that little blue shadow. So I just cleaned my brush. And look at that. I cleaned my brush and then I can soften that little shadow out. Same with this one right here. I'm going to soften that. And then since I have that that color on my brush, I'm just going to take it down here. This is in that brighter area, so I don't want my shadow to be as dark, but I do want to have a little indication. Just like that. Wow. Feels a little bit pink. I wonder. I wonder. Does that feel a little bit extra pink to you guys? It's feeling a little bit extra pink. And it's the lighting itself that's feeling pink. There we go. That feels a little bit better. Maybe a little brighter. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. Let's zoom out just a smidge. So let's see. My hand is in there. Yeah, that's, that's better. That's better. So let's go get the... We've got that little blue shadow there little blue shadows in the in the light area it's going to be a softer shadow just like that I haven't been putting shadows on the leaves I don't know if I'm going to I think the leaves are just printed on the paint on the uh, on the surface You can make those decisions on the fly as you're going. Yeah, that's that's looking good. <gasps> Debbie, 
I finally got your Christmas card. <laughs> I just, I went to the post office today and it was in my, in my mailbox. So thank you, Debbie, for the, for my Christmas card. It was beautiful. I love the, I love the watercolor trees that you did. That was so pretty. Thank you. And, um, let's see here. I have, I'm going to, whoa, I'm knocking things over is what I'm doing. And then, um, Janice Sullivan. I think I saw you in here. Nope. That was Janice Schmidt that I saw. Okay. <laughs> Janice Sullivan. I got a box with, um, some really cool ornament, um, uh, painted ornaments on paper mache boxes. So cool. Uh, I don't go to my mailbox as frequently as I should. I got a book um, also of filled with doodle coloring pages and reflections for, uh, you know, like just positive affirmation reflections that I got from uh, one of my moderators too, from Jan. And it's always a surprise when I go to my mailbox because, you know, I, like I said, I don't go to the post office mailbox very often, uh, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now. I just don't, I just don't go places very much. So I have to get a hold of Jan and let her know that I got it. She's um, catching the videos on replay, so she'll probably, she might hear this before I catch her. But I thank her greatly for my, for my coloring book. And no, it's a coloring notebook. It's very much like, um, like my coloring books that I've been putting onto, you know, this type of coloring book where it gives you a place you can, um, keep notes or write journal entries or whatever, and then do your, do your coloring on one side and then your journaling on the other. So it, it's like, Ooh, yeah. Giving me ideas for something. So take care, Birdie M. Welcome for, you know, thank you for being here. Oh, the post office is crazy. Yes. Yes. But it was probably there, um, a couple weeks ago. I just didn't go to the post office. So it might not have taken two months. It might've only taken them, you know, a month, but boy, the post was crazy. It took, it did take two months to get packages from England for Christmas this year. I have a really dear friend in England, um, and her parents and her husband, and they, they sent, they sent some packages for my, um, for my family for Christmas. And it took one package, one of the packages got here in about six weeks and the other package took eight weeks to get here. And now these are things that in a normal situation, normal, you know, no, normal time framing, uh, would take about a week, maybe, um, maybe two, but no. This, this was just really crazy. All right. I like that. And I think, no, I don't want to put the, I don't want to put the shadow on the leaves. I want the leaves to be flat. I want to put a little bit of, I think a little bit of that pink. Up on the. I'm just up on the knob. I'm going to put a little bit of the pink in the shadow. There's a fuzzy on the end of my brush. There we go. And maybe a little bit of a pink stripe. And I'm going to put a bit of a pink lining on the handle just because I want to. I'm going to put a little bit of a pink stripe around the top of the cup. I'm going to take some of that darker blue and it becomes a purple. 
darken that knob up a little bit. Darken up that little stripe back there. And then I'm going to take just some of the some of the Prussian blue, a little bit darker version of it like that. I want to put a bit of a sh I need a stronger shadow. A little bit thicker of the paint. I'm going to put a little bit of a stronger shadow right under the edge. of the lid right at the base of that knob we're going to yeah I dislike going to the post office definitely I'm gonna dry that real quick because I want to darken up that shadow underneath the edge of the lid and then I am going to darken the shadow on the table underneath of just the very edge. Of the teapot where it's right under the edge. So I'm I'm grabbing, wiping the water off of my brush. So I'm wiping the water out of my brush and picking up the paint straight from the palette. So it's going to be a lot thicker and a lot darker. Almost like a black ink, but it's blue but almost like an ink. Give us a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger. Shadow right there, right there. A little bit of a stronger shadow right under here. I'm going to make it into that more black tone by taking the Prussian blue and that burnt umber again, like I was making my gray but I'm making it a lot darker, a lot, or a lot thicker. Sometimes I say darker when I just mean that I'm using less water and so there's more pigment and that gives you that feeling of an optical blackness. So right under the edge, right here, kind of coming back just a little bit. I already have a lot of shadow, but I just want that, that connection to the table. I want the connection to the table. So that much darker right there. I'm going to put a little bit of that right up here and coming around under that edge. I am going to grab my white gouache because I do want to put a few little highlights. I want to strengthen up a few little highlights. Not too much. Ooh, but I do want a little bit more of a shadow right in there. So I used my kind of purple color. Oh, and I do have to give him his pretty eyes. Let's see, and a little bit more of the pink. So I'm glazing color in here. I'm punching it up just a little bit. The, the pink in his ear sort of disappeared. So let's just punch it up a little. There, and I think I want a little line of some shadow right there. This is looking so sweet. I will watching on TV. Just wanted to stop and say hi. Ah, Gail, welcome. See, Mark didn't even have to tell me. I, I see about a third of the comments that come through guys. So sometimes if a comment comes through, and I'm, my head is down and I'm focused, I won't see your comment right away, but I do try and go back and watch my video so that I can read all the comments. 
There we go. So yeah, thank you. He He's feeling pretty adorable to me too. I'm going to put a little bit darker right up underneath that edge. And because we've got the paper wet now, we can just let that blur out. There we go. Oh, so sweet. Yeah, I am going to take a tiny bit of gouache. I just have to find my tube. Where did I put it? There it is. Tiny bit. So I'm just dropping a little bit of gouache on here. Oh, I keep saying that. I need to do his eye. I left room in here so that his eye could have color. I need to put color in his eye. Oh my goodness gracious, Dee Dee, that is t minus 25 degrees C is cold. Very, very cold. I'm going to give him a pretty little blue eye. So I'm just grabbing some of this, this blue. I'm going to go in and just dot that in. And then rinse my brush. I'm going to grab a darker blue. Actually, I think I'll take some of that Prussian blue. And just dot a little bit of that. And then I want to dry it. So that way I can play with it a little bit. Now, I'm not going to get it completely dry. The first layer of paint is going to dry. And then the second layer will uh, still be wet. Because what I'm going to do is go boop like that. Give it a little boop. Kind of like, like you know, the cat runs, runs along and gives you a little bop. So I'm going to put some of that darker blue up here at the top. Kind of like a shadow underneath that eyelid area there. But then I'm going to give it a little boop. And I'm trying to trying to just build that color up a little bit without too much. And I'm going to drop a little bit of that darker color down here just in speckles and leave that bottom part. And then I'm going to make some of that or grab some of that really dark color. And I'm just going to color in the pupil with a little bit of darker watercolor. Ah, uh, see how making the pupil really dark gives you that fun, fun effect. I am grabbing my, my gouache now. The gouache really is going to be just highlights. I'm not adding any color to it this time, so it's just the white gouache, and my brush is pretty wet. I'm going to put a little line up here. There's going to be a few little, few little spots. I'm going to say that there's a bit of a highlight on, t on top of the dark. I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight. This is just pulling it forward a little bit. Wherever you put the highlight, it's going to pull it forward. It's going to bring it up. It's going to make it feel like it's coming towards you a little bit. It's fun on ceramic things to have like a little dot, just letting your brush sort of skip. And if it doesn't end up being as dark as you want, you can always go back and add a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit of that highlight right up here on the top of the handle. Highlights are one of those things, though, that can, can get away from you. So 
don't don't be too don't be too um, heavy-handed with your highlights I think that actually has a bright enough highlight the only thing that I need to highlight here is the back edge of that cup around the top and I might have to put like two coats oh, maybe even coming around the front edge of the cup so I want to dry that so guys if you're enjoying this fun little a whimsical painting I've been whimsically painting all month <laughs> and I'll be doing finishing this project will go through the first full week of February so I will be finishing up I think on the 8th or the 9th uh, finishing up the book on the 8th or the 9th so you still have days that you can come in and paint live with us or if you're coming in after the fact and you want to just have fun painting all of these and you don't want to draw them, I do have them available as coloring book on Amazon or as downloadable on Teespring. Oh, that's good. I like that. Maybe a bit of a white right there on top of his, on top of his ear. It needs to be a lot whiter, whiter. Maybe even brighten up that spot just a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of the white right at the bottom of the eye. Oh, a little bit in the corner. That's too much. <laughs> that was too much in the corner. There we go. Just. Soften. I'm going to soften out some of these highlights I want them a little more diffused see and that's the thing I can I can spend hours just going back and saying "Ooh, maybe I want to soften that maybe I want to brighten that and but you're the one that gets to decide when you're done I'm going to say right up here on the top I want to get that I need to smooth it out dry that off a little I just want the top of that spout but I had too much uh, water or not enough water on my brush so quick little highlight on the tip of his snout the spout the snout spout There we go. Oh, guys, this is so, so cute. You love the pink ears on the, on the elephant? Yeah, just that soft, soft pink. We're going to move stuff out from underneath. I'm going to zoom out. We're going to turn off the reference picture now because we don't, we don't really need it there anymore. And we're going to pull the tape off. Oh, and I do need to sign. And I'm thinking, let's see. I need to grab one of my pens that I've, or the pen that I was drawing with earlier should be still running. I'm going to put my signature just up inside here. It's black on blue, so it's hardly can be seen. But it's there. So if if it were to be printed here, I'll. Sh Michelle keeps asking. She wants a close up of my signature. It's just the letter S. It's an S with a line and the B. So hopefully nobody wants to try and uh, <laughs> forge my signature. I don't know why they would want to. Um, but there we're signed. We're going to pull the tape off now. 
And because I had already wet the background and dried it and used my heat tool to do the drying, I don't have to worry about it tearing the paper. But if you were to put tape down and it started looking like it was going to tear, just heat it with your hairdryer or with an embossing heat tool. And there we go. We have a beautiful, whimsical little teapot. I hope that you guys had fun with this. Make sure and click that like button. Let me know that you like this type of artwork and if you want more of it, because those likes are what's going to tell me what things you guys want to do more of. And remember that all of the designs are available in the Cozy Creative Designs coloring book on Amazon or my Cozy Creative Designs uh, print downloadable, instant print downloadable book. We also have the, I'm, I'm doing the whole sales thing again, guys, just, just so you know. We also have the original Doodle Hearts hand-drawn painted flower cards that you can download and print already painted from Teespring. So if you were looking for cards to send out for Valentine's this year, or you wanted cards to use as invitations for a party or whatever, you wanted to send a postcard to someone, they are the perfect size. You can legally send this as a postcard. Just print it on cardstock paper. Print on watercolor paper. And if you want to watercolor your own or color your own, I have a set of the black line cards. These were actually printed on watercolor paper. But if you want to just do a little coloring book to send to someone, you can print it on text weight paper or slightly heavier and fold it up, pop it in an envelope and mail it. Thank you guys so much. Make sure to check out tomorrow. We are going to be doing the notebook with your cup of coffee. It's going to be a virtual going to the coffee shop. You know, like those days when we used to go to the coffee shop and we used to hang out and sit by the window and sip our coffee and doodle in our sketchbooks? We're going to do a doodle in our sketchbook. Well, we're going to doodle the sketchbook. Paint the sketchbook that I already doodled? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I'll see you back here tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Bye-bye.